Let's talk about self-awareness. Self-awareness is your ability to recognize your strengths and weaknesses, positive and negative thoughts, feelings, and emotions. It is an emotional intelligence skill that helps you acknowledge and understand your emotions and deal with them accordingly as they happen. Now, how is self-awareness applicable to handling difficult calls? When you're self-aware, you understand how you feel in certain situations, such as when a client calls in, yelling at you, arguing with you, or complaining about a poor customer service. Knowing what emotional state you're in when you are handling difficult calls will help you process your emotions accordingly and move past them as soon as possible. For example, a client calls in angry, complaining about a bad service, and telling you you're not helping at all or you're just making the situation worse. As a self-aware individual, you already know that you'd usually get scared when you're yelled at or that you'd feel no longer confident when someone blames you for something you didn't do. And that's good that you know what your emotions are in those situations. That means you're able to recognize them and you're also able to snap back to reality and think logically as soon as possible. You process your emotions Take a deep breath and tell yourself, okay, there's no need to be scared now. This client is calling because she had a bad experience. She needs help. And this is my opportunity to make things better for her. When you lack self-awareness, the moment the client yells at you, you'll have a hard time processing your emotions, understanding what's happening, and moving past those emotions. In your mind, you'll probably think that it's all your fault and you're the one to blame. Don't be too hard on yourself though. A lack of self-awareness is not necessarily a bad thing. It's a human thing. You're hardwired to feel emotions first before acting on reason and logic, which is why it's important to understand yourself better so that you can manage your emotions whenever you're dealing with difficult situations or difficult clients. Improving self-awareness does not happen overnight, but it can be done. Let's talk about the three main tips on how you can improve your self-awareness. First, know who and what triggers you. It helps to pinpoint exactly what triggers you because this way you're able to put things into perspective and understand what's happening and also be able to respond accordingly. So instead of talking back to the client or sounding condescending when the going gets tough, you decide to be more empathetic and understanding. Number two, understand that feelings are neither good nor bad. Feelings are only feelings. Know that when you feel angry at a client who's yelling at you or who's blaming you for something that you didn't do, it doesn't make you a bad person. A client who's angry at a company for poor customer service doesn't make him or her a bad person either. We are human beings and we are allowed to feel. It's how you respond to your emotions or feelings that matter most. Would you let it ruin your day or ruin the client's experience even more? Or would you let it be an opportunity to show empathy and offer solutions? Tip number three, notice how your emotions manifest physically. How do you look or how does your body feel when you're angry or scared? Your body feels the emotion before you're even aware of it. So when your heart beats fast every time you're scared or if your muscles get tensed when you don't know what to do, you can associate these to your emotions and be able to act on them before you can even react or think negatively. Here's a bonus tip. Practice mindfulness and meditation. If you want to try it, it's a great way to get in tune with yourself. It helps to carve out some time in your busy day, even just for 5 to 15 minutes, to pay attention to the present moment. With continuous practice, you improve your focus, learn to manage distractions, have more positive thoughts, and just be calmer in general. You can find a lot of apps that offer guided meditations such as Headspace, Calm, and even Spotify. Now that you know how to improve your self-awareness, let's talk about some tips to handle difficult calls. First, do your best not to take it personally. Remember that clients are calling because they want resolution to their issues. They're not calling with the intention of attacking you. Number two, show the client that you care by delivering proper empathy statements, acknowledgement, and reassurance statements. 
And remember to only use positive scripting or language in your conversations. Number three, let the client vent and never argue. Sometimes it may be tempting to argue with a client, especially that you know you're right and when you're trying to prove a point. But it's best to listen with intent first and move to resolution as quickly as possible instead of dwelling on proving that you're right after all. Most of the time, the client really just wants to vent out and have their issues resolved as soon as possible. So remember to use short affirmative affirmations in between sentences and explanations instead of going dead silent all throughout. That's one of the best ways for you to show that you are actively listening. Number four, offer solutions and alternatives. Clients always want solutions and when they don't get exactly what they want, they would definitely want something like an option or an alternative. So give them a quick win before the end of the call, like assure them that you're working on a resolution so that they won't feel that they're just wasting their time. And last but not the least, remember that for every negative message, there's always a positive option or alternative. So again, remember our lesson about positive language. It can truly help you improve your conversations and diffuse volatile conversations with your clients. Now, understandably, when you are dealing with difficult calls, with all the emotions involved, you might feel disoriented or not knowing what to do. So here are some tips for you to stay calm in a difficult call. First is come to work early and be prepared. This may sound like a no-brainer, but really when you come to work early, this gives you a feeling of preparedness and calm to start taking on your task during the day. I will have you know that a lot of people who panic in calls are the ones who are usually late and who are not prepared for the day. Coming to work at least 30 minutes or 15 minutes before your scheduled shift just gives you a sense of calm because you get to read the updates ahead of time, practice adjusted scriptings, and generally just be prepared overall. Even when you're working from home or you're working remotely, it still helps to be at your desk ahead of your scheduled shift so that you can do what needs to be done. And when the time comes that you have to take calls, you're already prepared. Number two, expect to be unexpected. The truth is taking calls is not really easy. So when you set your mind to think that anything can happen during your shift, you may be getting difficult calls or difficult clients. You're also setting yourself to take on more challenging situations during the day. Now, we don't recommend always anticipating a difficult call because that's going to cause you anxiety. So what you can do is just be open-minded that anything can happen during your calls. At one point, you'll probably get an angry or irate customer or navigate a difficult conversation. Tip number three is when in doubt, consult your knowledge base or ask your team supervisor. Always remember that we want you to succeed in your job and we don't expect you to know absolutely everything. But we do want you to learn where to find the answers and how to use your tools and systems efficiently so that when you're helping the clients and you don't know where to go or what the answers are, you know that the answers can be found in the knowledge base or that you can reach out to your team supervisor when there's a difficult call or when there's anything that you don't know of. And also take it upon yourself to be accountable of your own learning. We don't just spoon feed you with everything. It's also your responsibility to learn as much as you can every single day at work. Tip number four is have something that will help relieve anxiety or bad energy. Whether it's a stress ball or a fidget spinner, at least have something at your desk that can help you stay calm and relax. And also have something that's not distracting while you're taking calls or while you're working. And last but not the least, tip number five is to prepare your elevator statement so that you have something to say when you don't know what to say or what to do next. Not knowing what to say to the client and the thought of what am I going to say next may send you into panic mode. So to overcome this, arm yourself with prepared lines or elevator statements that you can easily whip out when you don't know the answer to your client's questions. So instead of getting tongue-tied, going blank, 
going dead silent or have that awkward dead air in your conversations, at least have something to say through the use of elevator statements while you're thinking up your next steps. So here are some examples of elevator statements. That's a great question. Allow me to check on that and I'll get back to you in a minute. What you said actually makes sense. I want to make sure I have the correct information for you. Let me check with our team to confirm or verify that. Once you've delivered your elevator statement, then look for the answers, relax, and tell the client that you'll be back in the time frame that you provided. If it's taking you a while and it's already more than the time frame you've provided, then just feel free to go back to the client and extend. Remember to follow our guidelines in terms of providing a callback or resolving the issue within the save call. And that ends our discussion about managing emotions and dealing with difficult situations. In our next and final lesson, it's time to put everything together into a standard call flow that you can also use in your chat conversations. So see you on the last one.